Welcome to the Friday morning Lights Camera Cleveland edition. Of <laughs> I like how she said go after we were going. <laughs> Welcome to the Friday morning Thanks, Lights Camera One. Lights Camera Cleveland edition of Tennessee Valley this morning. I'm the Slinky. With me is Rob Alderman, who is about to pick a topic. Ready? Go. Steve Hartline is starting a Cleveland cutie contest. What's with that guy? I think that he is looking for his competition to see who is as cute and adorable as he is in the uh, six inch to two foot tall range. Let's be honest, he falls into that demographic perfectly and he wants to make sure that he is the cutest uh, two foot tall person in Cleveland. The fact is that, that Steve Hartline already was mayor of Munchkin City. Does he truly need to be Cleveland's cutie? Do you need to start, Hartline, do you need to start a contest? Just to remind everyone how cute you are, we know, it's like this is, I'm like, Steve, you're so cute, look at how cute you are. I think that this is probably a direct re rebuttal or somehow at least connected to his accusations of you uh, being, uh, was it the- Cleveland's Brad Pitt. That's right, the Brad Pitt of Cleveland. And yeah, I, I he think, doesn't like the fact that I am Cleveland's Brad but Pitt. But you know what? It has always bothered him. To him I say this, Steve, if you need to be declared the Gerber baby of Cleveland, then have your cutie contest. <laughs> We're in favor. Here's the facts. Cleveland's cutie contest, you're gonna be hearing all about this thing. It's already been out in the banner. But we all know that my daughter's gonna win. I believe that that is true. At least she has my vote. We have a great show coming up. It's huge. We have gonna, we're gonna come back with some big news. It's intergalactic news. We have a gentleman here from Cleveland Utilities who's gonna explain to us everything Cleveland Utilities. It's gonna be awesomely Cleveland Utilities. And then later on, a chemistry teacher who is also an artiste. All that and more right here on Tennessee Valley this morning. And we are back. You're watching Tennessee Valley this morning, the Lights, Camera, Cleveland edition. I'm Rob Alderman. With me as always, my stalwart traveling companion, the Hollywood Slinky, and it's time for... The big news. Indeed. You know, I just noticed you can't see my hand, and so I can, it's like Mickey Mouse is walking across the screen, and it kind of bothers me a little. Now they're having a conversation together. And now they're done. Thank God. <laughs> Here's the big news. Tell us where's the big news come from, my I'll friend. tell you where the big news I comes you from. Would. The one, the only, the number one bestest, greatest news source in the entire Cleveland area, the Cleveland Daily Banner, which is delivered by person to my front yard. I walk out the front door, I pick up the paper. I do like this, because that's what they did in the old school that's days. Because right. I've had a long day at work, honey, like that. I do that, and I read the paper. Based off those headlines, I bring the news to you. Well, don't leave us hanging, my friend. I won't. The very first one is actually a reprise of last week. We, oh. didn't, we didn't actually take this one from, from the Daily Banner, but you remember last week, the Daily Banner ran this, this, uh, this uh, headline, Area Avoids Storms for, for now. now. And we said... Who knows? Maybe we'll have storms later today. And guess what? We had storms later that day. A bunch of them in the form of tornadoes. They came down and uh, did a lot of damage. So the new headline reads, Area Void Storms for Now, Oddly Prophetic. Dun, dun, dun. Well done, Cleveland Daily Banner. <laughs> you knew. You warned us. I you mean, did. it was ominous. For now. We were worried, and we should have been. I, I like to say this. You know, a lot of local news places, they get a bum rap. That's right. People don't know what to say. They don't know how to feel about a local news. And not the Cleveland Daily Banner. They were willing to go out there on a limb and to say, look, you may feel okay, but you're not okay. And we weren't okay. I mean, we're okay. We're thankful that nobody okay. died. We got to see that the community comes out in record numbers again that to we help are their fellow man. the city with spirit. I told you that we were. I'd like to rewind 
two episodes ago to remind you that I said that we were. <laughs> and indeed, you proved it last Friday. Also in the news, county schools get reaccreditation. Whew. That was a close call. <laughs> We thought for a second that county schools were not going to get reaccreditation. A little while later in the show, we will talk to Mr. Johnny Evans from Lee University, and we're going to get to the bottom of this. What is reaccreditation and why does it matter? That's right. Why does accreditation matter to begin with? I don't know, but the Cleveland Daily Banner does. Uh, also in local, local news, and I think this one may be the most important oh, of I, our local I news. I am hugely moved by this news. <clears throat> Walker Valley Fine Arts Department presents... Oklahoma. Sing us a little. Oklahoma, blah, 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 <laughs> blah. And that's what they're getting out in Walker Valley, but with a little bit of a twist. Yeah, that's right. In Walker, at, at the high school level, that, that performance is more like this. Now, oh, line. <laughs> Line, please. <laughs> Here's the facts. Uh, nobody does the fine arts better than Oklahoma. And, I mean, uh, better than Walker. And Valley. nobody does Oklahoma better than Walker. Right. Valley. Here's there the thing. Go. Here is the. Thing. What is the thing? I thing? don't want to attack. I don't want other people. Like somebody out there just now was like, my kid goes to Bradley High School. He's not at Walker Valley, and they did Oklahoma great. Or my kid goes to Cleveland High School, and they did Dial in for Murder, and it was just as great as Oklahoma. Okay, here's the facts. We're not afraid to be hard-nosed journalists here at uh, Lights, Camera, Cleveland. That's right. Okay, and, and the fact is this. We have gone out. We have scoured all of the high school productions. We go to everyone every year. That's right. We even are aware of last night on Thursday, little Vaughn Bumgardner's uh, way, way, way off-Broadway debut. That is correct. And it was no Oklahoma at Walker Valley. Exactly. And I love Vaughn Bumgardner. I and love Vaughn Bumgardner. Right. And one day he hopes to be in Walker Valley's version of Oklahoma. So Walker Valley, kudos to you. That's the end of our local news. That's right. It's time to get into a little bit of national, national news. Why don't you hit us with uh, this one right here? Oh, the Republicans are still unsure who will run for president. How can this be? You know, we suggested several, several weeks ago that we take all of the Republican candidates and we just put them in a Thunderdome uh, and see who, who emerges. That has not happened yet. This is an interesting, touchy sort of subject, and I'll tell you why. It's because I don't really know why. I, I'm conservative <laughs> and I don't know why. Okay, I think at some point, conservatives need to admit that this is getting a little bit ridiculous. Right. That's maybe just me. The problem is you have what? You have Santorum wins Tennessee. You have Newt Gingrich who wins Georgia. And then you have Mitt Romney who won everything else. Right. I would like to remind you that in episode number one, of the, the day we took over for Best Dan. Best episode ever. Right. The day we took over this show from Sir Dan Howell, I said, I think at the end of the day, when they're done beating each other up, Mitt Romney will receive. Now, that, that's because I'm our political pundit. Right? Sure. Okay. Yes. So I'm our political pundit, and I say that at the end of the day, Mitt Romney is still going to get the nomination. Okay? I, I'm not sure anymore why no one will listen to me. They, but they're unsure. Maybe they you, don't know. Perhaps you've been Whitney horned on the subject of political uh, uh, knowledge. Here's a big one. Here's a big piece All of right. national news, and this one's important. Okay, it's important because this thing is breaking. This is the newest of the news. Coney 2012 goes viral, sparks awareness and controversy. Wow. I am aware, and now I am outraged. <laughs> tell me why. I will tell you why. Here's the deal. Eight years ago, a documentary team was in Uganda. They were filming oh, some geez, things. Oh, jeez, it's the Uganda thing again. <laughs> I mean, Here's seriously. The thing. Here's the thing. These guys, they're sleeping. They're, they're camping. It's some American filmmakers. And they wake up and they go outside their tent, and there are thousands, literally thousands of children walking past their tent in the middle of the night. They're like, this is strange. We didn't expect to find this in the wilderness. And what they find out is that every single night, these children leave their villages. They walk through the night to their town because they're afraid that this warlord, this evil warlord named Joseph Coney, will kidnap them from their beds. Over the last eight years, this guy has kidnapped 30,000 children. He takes the little girls, he sells them into sex slavery. He takes the boys and he gives them weapons and makes them fight in his army. He has made the number one, he's the number one, uh, on the number one list of international justice in terms of the people that they're seeking to bring to justice, and yet no major government will get involved because he doesn't really pose a threat to their economics. So, 
this group, uh, Invisible Children, they've been going around for the past several years, and they have just recently formed a video, and it got released two days ago. This video immediately went viral, and it is this. They are basically running a Coney 2012 campaign. And the campaign is this. They are trying to make this guy so famous. They want every person on the face of the planet. They're utilizing Facebook. They are utilizing Twitter. They are spreading the word through posters. They are basically running this like a presidential campaign. That's right. They're, official, they're the official uh, food of the Coney <laughs> campaign is the chili cheese dog. That is true. I don't really know how it, that It's applies. a Coney chili cheese dog. You really wigged me out. But it should be that. It should be that. So the fact is, here's where the controversy Nothing is. says stop child exploitation quite like a Coney chili cheese dog. That's true. And I am sure that Coney is suing us right now for the way that you brought them into this controversy. Maybe. And it is controversial, Slinky. It is. I'm... Here's the reason why. Because when you do something good, someone always gets offended. <laughs> when you uh... say, let's bring a bad man to justice... Someone is going to get offended, and they're going to say, I don't think that guy should be brought to justice. I think someone else should be brought to justice. Here's Rob's take. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Dear people, stop. Just stop. There's a bad man out there, and now we know more about him. If we can stop him, maybe we ought to. How's that? I think that was pretty good. In other news, last of our national news, Department of Justice may sue Apple and several uh, major publishers over reports that they are secretly colluding to raise iBook prices. And nothing is as upsetting as colluding. Yeah, I think that just the fact that the New York Times used the word collude deserves a Whitney. That's true. That's what I Maybe. think. Maybe. New York Times. You've been Whitneyed. What do you think about this, Slinky? I think that, um, I don't care. In international news, there was a solar flare. Right? There was. This is intergalactic proportions. And we go live right now to our in-depth, hard-nosed journalist, Hollywood Slinky, for this report. I hope. A powerful solar flare Tuesday evening caused the surface of the sun to shudder. The blast from this solar flare has hurled toward Earth in what NASA physicist Alex Young described as, quote, a big blob of magnetized material. As seen in this image taken from the bridge of the Starship Enterprise, this flare is the second largest in the current 11-year solar cycle, which began in 2008 with activity to peak sometime next year. This coronal mass ejection sends solar plasma and ionized gases into space, containing a massive magnetic field. These all fly toward the Earth in the form of spiral yellow smudges, wavy lines, and zodiac space dragons. Is this the Mayan apocalypse? What does this mean for us? Well, when this blob hits the Earth's magnetic field, it causes the field to oscillate, generating electrical currents that move around in the upper atmosphere. When strong enough, these can also cause electrical currents on the ground, which affect us. This means, in an absolute worst-case scenario, satellites could be affected, creating problems with GPS devices, electrical power grids could be knocked out, and cell phone and radio transmissions could become garbled. Also, genetically mutated monsters could evolve and rule the Earth. However, in the most likeliest of scenarios, we'll simply have increased aurora borealis sightings as far south as Illinois. I'm the Hollywood Slinky. Back to you. That was hard-hitting journalism right there. I didn't know you had it in you. I didn't either. Beware Zodiac Space Dragons. That's now, right. We have some it's movie terrifying. news. We do. We've got a little bit of Hollywood news. Uh, first up is that Terra Nova has now been officially canceled by Fox. This is the most expensive television series of all time. And uh, this, this cancellation is not coming as a surprise, though it is coming as a disappointment to a lot of fans and critics who said that by the end of the series, uh, they had figured out what they were doing and that the season finale was actually some of the best television uh, on on this this season um it also is the highest rated television show to now have been canceled this season listen 
I am getting the feeling that the networks really could care less why they cancel or don't cancel a show. I think that they go, oh, science fiction? Well, we only have two options. We either put it in the Friday night death slot or we cancel it. I agree. I agree with that. What's our other piece of news? Well, the other piece of news is that uh, South by Southwest starts this weekend. That's the huge... Uh, film and arts and music festival and and now technology that happens uh, out in Texas and a company called E1 has just announced that they have bought the North American distribution rights for a little independent film that's called Iron Sky. Now for those of you who follow our podcast we have been reporting on Iron Sky for about two years. That's right. Iron Sky is a little independent film made by some college guys uh, in and Germany. it has went crazy viral. It is... Or Norway or one of these places. Right, I think it's, it's foreign. Right. And it is a black and white film uh, that takes place uh, um, in basically a world in which the Nazis were not defeated, but rather... Everyone thinks they've been defeated. But rather, they were actually driven off to the dark side of the new moon, where they were... Uh, they regrouped. ...in a secret base and are now returning to Earth in a bunch of flying saucers to reinvade us. We have been very excited about this film for a long time. We weren't quite sure at first how comedic it was going to be or how serious, and I've determined now after seeing the trailers, it really doesn't matter. It looks great. <laughs> it really um, is supposed It was made to be a on comedy. a very, very low budget. Yeah, it is supposed to be a comedy, and I think it will be. Right. But I love, I love when films do this. I love the fact that these guys have hung in there. This was a massive viral campaign. They didn't really use a Kickstarter to get this funded, but they did fund it through Facebook. That's right. They got on Facebook and they said, for those of you who think this is an interesting idea. Here's an address to send a check. Send a check to this address. And if you do, you can come, if you've got the money to fly over to Norway or wherever it was they were filming this thing, you can be in the movie. If you have, every time they had an idea, do you guys, do you guys have an idea for the soundtrack? Send us your music right. options. Do you have an idea for a backdrop? Send us your idea. I love the fact that this is sort of a crowdsourced movie and it makes me excited that it has distribution. Right. And the whole thing looks like a 1950s 50s B movie science fiction film. So if Which you is going to make it fun. If you get a chance, you Googleize that and uh, check it out. That is it for the big news. Who are we coming back to? We're in a coming minute? back to Dean Watson from the uh, Cleveland Utilities. I could not be more excited. You could be more excited. Nope. You don't, no, you could. I, what nope. I want to see is a little bit of dance. I'd like to see a dance lead us out to commercial. The Rob is excited about the Cleveland Utilities guest dance. Here we go. Cleveland. Cleveland Utilities. We'll be right back. Cleveland. Cleveland Utilities. I'm Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. Hello, I'm Dr. Gupta, and I'd like to introduce you to a valuable new healthcare solution here in Cleveland. Hyperbaric Services of East Tennessee is now open and accepting patients. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy is an incredible treatment clinically tested for a variety of physical and neurologic conditions, including autism, multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, migraine headaches, chronic fatigue syndrome, and even sports injuries and sprains. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy is a simple, safe, and painless process that raises a patient's oxygen level in the body. This increased oxygen level in our tissues and organs boosts the body's natural healing abilities and allows our bodies to function at a higher level. We will be happy to work in cooperation with your regular physician. However, referral is not required for this treatment. So whether you're dealing with a weekend injury, a chronic medical condition, or looking for anti-aging solutions, you owe it to yourself to explore what hyperbaric oxygen treatment can do for you or your loved ones. I invite you to contact us today for some more information. Hi, I'm Brittany Jackson. Join me every Wednesday night at 6.30 and midnight where we will highlight local sports, chat with coaches, and discover new tips every week. Only on In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Ford, board certified in anti-aging medicine and pain management. Have you had a recent decrease in energy, lack of sex drive, feel moody, grumpy, or sad? If so, you may have low testosterone and be a candidate for bioidentical hormone replacement. Listen to what two of my patients have to say. Before I came to the Ford Clinic, I had to have a nap every day. When I got off work, I'd lay around, really didn't want to do much, and felt real lazy. I've noticed since I had the testosterone implant that I could go a good eight hours doing the things I enjoy doing. I had it done, took about 25, 30 minutes five months and I'm doing good. My stomach, my muscles, 
they've completely changed. My fat level has dropped. I get to go out and run, exercise with my son. My muscles are just getting stronger. If you'd like to change your life, please call me at Ford Center for Pain Management and Anti-Aging Medicine at 423-400-9115. It's a very simple process and it's well worth it. Welcome back to Tennessee Valley this morning's Friday Lights Camera Cleveland edition. We are here with Dean Watson. Dean is from the uh, Cleveland Utilities. He's the operations manager, and we're very, very pleased to have you with us, Dean. Dean, welcome to the show. Is Thank Dean you. mic'd? I don't think <laughs> Dean is mic'd. No one can hear Dean. Oh, God. We're going we're gonna to take a moment. This is what's great about live television. If, if Jimmy Logan was here, he'd just hold the mic up to his mouth and just talk with it. But, uh, but he's not, so that's all right. Well, that just happened. <laughs> camera one. Make a note, camera one. Next time, remind me to mic up the guest. I'm the talent. We are. <laughs> well, I can't. That's what Dan would say. If Sir Dan Howell was here, do you think he would have mic'd up Dean Watson? He would. Yes. Dean. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, <laughs> the I consummate do. professional. Well, Dean, welcome, welcome to the show. We're glad to have you here. Thank you. Uh, why don't you tell us real quick, what do you do with Cleveland Utilities? I'm a manager of the operations for the electric division. All right, and what does what does that mean? Like to uh, someone, I don't know anything about about utilities. So, so what's that mean? You know, what's your day like? Our operations department covers all of the outside line crews, our metering, substation, traffic lighting. So you're the guy that coordinates when they come out to shut off my power when I don't pay my bill. Yes. <laughs> I hate this guy. So welcome to the <laughs> nicest guy in Cleveland. Yeah, I'll be honest. A lot of times, and Dean, I don't know if I should tell you this, but when those guys come out, I haggle with them a little bit and I go, listen, I know that I owe you $300, <laughs> but if you take $10, and you put it in your pocket and maybe leave my power on and say you showed up, you couldn't get to the meter, things like that. So I like your guys. They are very cool and they're always really, really good to me. I do have a question, Dean Watson from the utilities. As I, I've never been this close to a very powerful man inside a utility company before. I'll be honest with you. So I need to ask, did you get into the utilities business for the fat cash, because I know you guys make like millions of dollars, those awesome boots or your sweet tan. You, this guy has, like we are like a couple of pasty, you can tell one of these kids works outside and two of these kids sit at a desk all day. Of those three, the boot, is it the boots, the fat cash, or the sweet tan? They are nice, nice it, boots. It would have to be the boots. It's the boots, they are not, those are some good boots. We take our boots really seriously around these parts. All right, well, you, uh, you've been, now you've been with utilities. How long have you been with Cleveland Utilities? Uh, about 24 years. Wow. That's, uh, That's I, strong. He's, so before, I was, say? before That's we a, were born. Before we were born, <laughs> you were at Cleveland Utilities. <laughs> Almost. Almost. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> well, um, you were here, so you were here during the April storms last year. Yes. The tornado, as we like to call it here in the South. Well, during the tornado, we had, it was in excess of what, 40,000 people were without power. Yes, we had uh, about half of our system without power. What is, what is that like? You know, when, when you, you know, nine o'clock at night, you get a phone call, right? And, and they say, hey, you know, everybody's, everybody's dark. What, what do you do? First of all, how do you see to find your phone? <laughs> Well, we do have power there at the office. We have a generator that carries through power outages, but uh, we were manning our dispatch room and, and we're getting SCADA updates on our substations and we're aware of, of some of the issues we were having, but uh, once we did get crews and manpower out there to physically tell us what was going on, we had no idea. Yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty rough. Yes. Well, what, did, uh, <coughs> what, what, did, what was the first step then? You know, you, you send your local guys out to take a look, and when you kind of figure out just how bad things are, what, what do you do? Well, once, you know, once the initial assessments are made and, and the magnitude back in April of the four different tornadoes that came through our system, we had to start backing up and, and staging our own men and, then all, and asking for outside help. Now, when you, when you ask for outside help, this is something that's kind of been interesting to me because I know like, for example, where I live, I live in the Twin Oaks subdivision, don't rob me. 
Uh, I live in the Twin Oaks subdivision and, uh, well, what? No, that's important because everybody watching knows that right now, I'm not at my house. But everybody knows that right now, your wife, heavily armed, is at your house. That's right, heavily armed. So, um, how does, I know that my neighborhood was, was actually turned back on by, by a crew from Orlando. And then, now we had crew from, from all over. Where, where, where all did people come from to help us? We had crews uh, all the way from Florida up through Kentucky. Uh, had a large number from other areas here in Tennessee. But uh, about 30 out of town crews were here assisting us. That's amazing. Now how does that happen? You know, is there like, is there a network? Right. Or Who a... coordinates that? Who coordinates all these other crews w to get them all on one page? Well, our uh, general manager and our electric division manager made calls out on some of these organizations like uh, the Tennessee Valley Public Power Association and some of these other organizations. And it's, uh, it's a vast network that about all, in, all of the southeastern utilities are listening to in times like this that uh, come to our aid. Uh, now, for for our listeners, uh, if you could tell camera one and camera two here. I like the way you just um, assume that no one's watching us. <laughs> they're just, they're, well, they're putting their ready. makeup yeah, on and they're their listening makeup, to us on the ready. TV. Nobody watches us. <laughs> um, here's the thing, Dean. Um, w you know, during the last storms, um, I was out and I did a lot of chainsaw work and I was actually out in a lot of remote areas. Actually, we both went out and we were doing a lot of chainsaw work in some really remote areas. And there were some places, I'll tell you the truth, I, I saw some places where I couldn't even believe you could get a truck up to those uh, places. In fact, you know, the night of the storms, we were out cutting to make room for trucks. Mm -hmm. But what I would like you to explain, until I saw it with my own eyes, it was really hard for me to grasp how and why that power goes off to begin with and how somebody starts kind of repairing that system. Is there a simple, and I know it's not a simple job, but think about this. Most people in this city and county watch this show. We are probably the number one rated show on television in this area. So you have the captive audience. Us and Terra Nova. Right, you have a captive <laughs> yeah. audience right now that's watching this. And I know for me, I, I, before I saw it all in, at work, um, I wondered how this thing works. Is there a, a way that you can kind of simply explain to our viewers what the, the magnitude of this problem and how somebody starts repairing a system like that? What is, it, what is that like? It's hard for, I think, an average person to wrap their mind around it. It's so complex. Well, it, it is a long procedure. Uh, initially, we're looking at our transmission system, which provides power to all of our distribution substations. And then from that point, we look at the individual substations and then the main feeders coming off of those. Uh, we try to restore power to the largest areas possible at a time, get the largest number of customers back on. Now, is that how you determine who gets turned back on first? Well, to a point, yes. There, I mean, there are priority issues as far as hospitals and, and, the, and things of that sort. But, sure. uh, it's, it's generally the areas get concentrated on where we can get the most people back on the quickest. So if you have two, so let's say, substations that are, are both down, and one feeds 10 houses and one feeds 10,000 houses, you're going to fix the one that feeds 10,000 houses first? Absolutely. Okay. <coughs> Had a cough. <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm like, I've got this <laughs> thing. So uh, now tell us about, about this past week. You know, we had uh, kind of a repeat of, of last April's events that in a much smaller scale happened this, this last week. Uh, how many, do you know how many people were down last Friday? We had uh, approximately 2,500 people without a power. Is that, no, is that a lot? I, I don't know what uh, a scale, obviously you had, you know, 40,000 back last April, but, but is that a large number for a, a storm? It is a fairly large amount. It, uh, we only had one tornado this time, but it did cut across the northwestern part of town, and uh, we had five circuit breakers out at one time there. What, in what way have these storms, I, I'll be honest with you, this last storm was actually a little bit, obviously, the, the April 27th storms were more devastating. I think everybody would agree with that. We had loss of life. Sure. Uh, the amount of damage mm -hmm. was much more. But in a way to me, Dean, I don't know, you could speak for yourself on this, but it, to me, these, these storms that just happened uh, last Friday, they were actually a little bit more creepy. And I'll they, tell they you why. They were definitely scary. I'll tell you why they were scarier to me. They were scary because for me, I thought, 
well, this is right on schedule. I thought, for me, it felt like this is going to be what we experience this time of year. So I did a little bit of research, and I found out that most meteorologists are saying that, that with the Gulf Stream moving, which we know has occurred uh, due to polar ice caps melting and the way that the cold water goes through the, through the oceans, the Gulf Stream is moving quite significantly, um, and that that is creating almost a new tornado alley. And we are in it, okay? Now, this is interesting. The Slinky and I are both from <laughs> Indiana. The okay? old tornado The alley. old <laughs> tornado alley. So tornadoes were not new to us. And, in fact, I remember telling my wife why we wouldn't move back to Indiana. And it was, well, it, Tennessee doesn't have tornadoes. But, but what happened uh, last Friday felt very familiar, and it made me feel like this is going to happen again next year. It's going to happen again before this year is over. I'm not saying it will, but it's what I felt, Okay. What are you guys doing now differently than you did last April in light of that? How are you looking at your subsystems, your, the way you manage power, knowing that, you know what, this could be our new reality. This is maybe going to be something that we do all the time, and little things are going to start to happen. You know, storm shelters are going to be built. People are going to begin to live in houses with basements, you know, things like this. What are you guys doing that's maybe different than you were doing last April? We are looking at uh, storing more material uh, at off-site locations, and uh, we are fine-tuning our responses. Uh, we had uh, we offered evaluation forms to all the outside help that came in here last April to rate us oh, that's on fantastic. a lot of different areas as far as our response and uh, and the logistics on their their uh, their hotels, their meals, their their equipment they were handed, the material that we could get to them, uh, the manpower we were putting with them to to get them around the system, everything that we could think of. And we have fine-tuned a lot of our procedures and uh, the way we do respond to such storms like we've had. That's incredible. Do you know, are, are there a lot of, uh, um, like I know it changed by my house. Uh, we, were, we were that without power for, you know, we were like nine and a half days. We were at the, the we were one of the last places to get turned back on. But I know that, that there's a, a high voltage line that runs across down the street kind of behind our house. Mm -hmm. And I know that back before April, you know, they were just the really, really tall, you know, wooden telephone poles. And I noticed now when they were replaced, they were replaced with steel poles. Um, is that sort of thing, is that something you've done in a lot of, a lot of the, the main lines to sort of help keep those things better? We have, and a lot of that has to do with cost. Mm -hmm. uh, at, uh, wood poles are getting extremely expensive. Really? Yes. So it's actually cheaper to put in a metal pole than it is to do a, a wood pole? The metal po poles are <clears throat> expensive, but their life expectancy far exceeds the wood poles. Sure. Well, what would you say, we're, we're about to go to commercial, not just yet, camera one, we're going to wait a minute, we're going to finish with Mr. Dean Watson, but what would you say, knowing that you have most of Cleveland and Bradley watching you right now, if you could say something to them from the Cleveland Utilities Office, what do you want them to know? We're giving you a platform. That's what we do <laughs> here. We provide you a platform to speak. So Dean Watson from Cleveland Utilities, give camera one a, a little love. Even if it's just something that we didn't get to talk about yeah. that you'd like to share. What would you like to share? We want to well, give you a platform. The main thing would just be to, to please be patient during these storms and, and give us time to get out there and, and work safely and uh, to stay away from any down power lines that you may run across. That's, I think, solid, that's solid advice, yeah. I think. <laughs> I think. I think you used that time well. <laughs> I, think that, uh, I think Cleveland really does does appreciate you guys i know that i believe that and especially you know after last april we saw how all of you were you know many of your own linemen were without power and and were mm -hmm. you know leaving their their wives and families at home in the dark to go help you know bring light to to everyone and i, I think that we do all appreciate you a lot more this year than we did maybe two years ago i know that when the orlando crew drove down my street to turn the power back on my whole street was standing on all of their porches and we were clapping for them and it was a pretty incredible moment and i i think that 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 sort of appreciation i think has really really held through and i'm sure that you saw that sort of thing uh, this past friday as well we did we saw that in several neighborhoods this past friday it's well dean before we say goodbye, I have to warn you that before you go, we have to put you through, through the ringer, and that is this. Every single show, 
every single guest has to answer four questions to the Hollywood Slinky. You know, this show began as a movie show. You may not know that. We do a little bit of politics. We do a little bit of local news. But in our heart, we loves us the movies. So, Slinky. All right, question number one. What is your favorite movie of all time? That would have to be any Clint Eastwood Western. That's fair. <laughs> that's a fair It's hard to pick a, yeah, a, that's a, fair a top one on that one. All right, what... what do you think is the greatest movie ever made? The best movie ever made? Oh, Yeller. All right. Strong, strong. What is, <laughs> what do you think, what movie have you seen more times than any other? That would be a toss up. Uh, the Lion King or The Little Mermaid or anything that the kids are watching in the car. <laughs> You've got kids. On yes. I was going to say you have a little soft spot in your heart there, Dean. You're a man's <laughs> man, but you're not afraid to love a cartoon. I get to listen to them. I don't get to watch them. There you go. Mm, much like so, our viewers. That's right. And then the last one is, uh, what do you think is the funniest movie ever made? Oh, man. Funniest movie. Don't say Twister. No. Oh! <laughs> Easy, Slinky. Easy. Uh, Caddyshack. Oh, that's a strong choice. Good answer. All right. Well, Dean, we appreciate you being on the show with us. We appreciate I know that, uh, everything We that appreciate you guys do. everything you do. I know that the people out there, they appreciate everything you guys do. Um, you guys are true hometown heroes, and, and thank you for being on our show. Thank you. We'll be right back with the artistic chemistry teacher, Johnny Evans. <laughs> I'm Brittany Jackson. Join me every Wednesday night at 6.30 and midnight where we will highlight local sports, chat with coaches, and discover new tips every week. Only on In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Ford, board certified in anti-aging medicine and pain management. Have you had recent decrease in energy, lack of sex drive, feel moody, grumpy, or sad? If so, you may have low testosterone and be a candidate for bioidentical hormone replacement. Listen to what two of my patients have to say. Before I came to the Ford Clinic, I had to have a nap every day. When I got off work, I'd lay around, really didn't want to do much, and felt real lazy. I've noticed since I had the testosterone implant that I could go a good eight hours doing the things I enjoy doing. I had it done, took about 25, 30 minutes, five months, and I'm doing good. My stomach, my muscles, they've completely changed. My fat level has dropped get to go out and run, exercise with my son. My muscles are just getting stronger. If you'd like to change your life, please call me at Ford Center for Pain Management and Anti-Aging Medicine at 423-400-9115. Very simple process and is well worth it. Hello, I'm Dr. Gupta and I'd like to introduce you to a valuable new healthcare solution here in Cleveland. Hyperbaric Services of East Tennessee is now open and accepting patients. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy is an incredible treatment clinically tested for a variety of physical and neurologic conditions, including autism, multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, migraine headaches, chronic fatigue syndrome, and even sports injuries and sprains. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy is a simple, safe, and painless process that raises a patient's oxygen level in the body. This increased oxygen level in our tissues and organs boosts the body's natural healing abilities and allows our bodies to function at a higher level. We will be happy to work in cooperation with your regular physician. However, referral is not required for this treatment. So whether you're dealing with a weekend injury, a chronic medical condition, or looking for anti-aging solutions, you owe it to yourself to explore what hyperbaric oxygen treatment can do for you or your loved ones. I invite you to contact us today for some more information. I'm Wes Robbins with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. When it comes to employee benefits, we've got you covered. Call me today for the best service and best solutions to your group health and employee benefits needs. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. And we're back. You're watching Tennessee Valley this morning. I'm Rob Alderman. Next to me, the Slinky. With us now, uh, Johnny Evans, he is a Lee University chemistry teacher, Slinky, but in addition to that, he is also, as you can see, a fantastic artist. Johnny, welcome to the show. 
Thanks for having me. It's good for your age. <laughs> I'm getting there. Now, Johnny, we, we do, as you know, we are hard-nosed journalists. Oh. We are hard-nosed journalists here. It's true. You may have heard from Dean Watson, our segment with Dean Watson, where we were really difficult on him, uh, that we asked the difficult questions, we asked the tough things, because most of Cleveland and Bradley County watches this show every morning. Mm -hmm. And um, so I am going to take us back to the big news. Why is accreditation important? Uh, it's sort of like the checks and balances to make, school, make sure the school system is doing what they're supposed to do. Do you believe so, in it? Do you like accreditation? Or is it like a thing that as a teacher you're sort of like, ugh? Accreditation. Uh, it's, it, it's good to have so that you know that, that what you're teaching is valued by other people, but when, when you have to go through the accreditation process, you don't, you don't enjoy it. It's not a lot of fun. <laughs> well, tell no. us, tell us uh, Johnny, what do you teach at Lee University? I teach chemistry and physics. You teach physics. chemistry and physics. So you know a little bit about the solar flare that's going on. Not a whole lot. But you do agree that it might produce a zodiac dragon. There's a, there's a slight possibility that could occur. You do believe <clears throat> that it may produce grotesque monsters that will rule the earth. Uh, possibly. It, possibly. There'd have to be a little bit uh, bigger a, a little bit bigger solar flare might. As might a do man that. of science, you have to admit there's a chance. There's a slight chance, I would say. You heard it here first uh, on Tennessee Valley this morning. This is the kind of stuff, <laughs> this is the kind of hard-hitting news that Sir Dan Howell was even afraid to report. He was afraid to go there, but Dan, when he left, I'll tell you the truth. When Dan left, the, the lights here went dark, okay? And we stood here, there were tears, there were hugs, there were talking monkeys. When this happened, the last words that Dan said to us was he said, Slinky, Rob, don't be afraid to tell them about the Zodiac <laughs> monster. Don't be afraid to tell them about the grotesque people that might one day rule the earth as a result of a solar flare. Please go where I've not gone. Then he hugged us, shook our hands, and he went to his boat. And we've not seen him since. <laughs> Except at everything that Gary Davis is supposed to be at. And then we see him there. Right. That's when we see Dan Howell. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Gary and Davis. And at all the Craniofacial Institute <laughs> events. But we didn't come here to talk about Dan Howe. Heck no, well, we didn't. We came here to talk about Johnny. We are always Everybody talking about Everybody wants Dan. to talk about Dan Howe. Here's the thing, Johnny Evans. Tell us what classes you teach at Lee. Uh, Physics. I heard, I heard a rumor. I know, but there, listen. <laughs> everybody knows that's not it. You don't go in and you take physics or chemistry. You take, like, super physics of solar flare 304. Super physics califragilist. Or, what's your favorite? How about this? What's your favorite class to teach? Uh, general introduction to physics. Why? Uh, because I get to teach kids all the, about how everything works. Tell me this. I am a bad, I'm bad at science. Okay. John, <laughs> you may not know this. I wouldn't have guessed that, Rob. But I, I'm not so good at science. Tell me why I should be interested in physics. If, if I was in your class and I'm like, man, teacher Evans is bumming me out. I don't even want to be here, bro. And you see that I'm kind of a down and out kid who's down on my luck and I had a hard life and you really want to keep me in school because if not, I might leave and go join a gang. And so you reach out to me the way that Jim Belushi did in The Principal. <laughs> and you ride your motorcycle through the halls of Lee University and you say, Wow, stop. Chemistry and physics is important. This is the longest question you've ever asked. <laughs> And I'm kind of like, no, bro. And you're like, yes. And I'm like, no, dude. And you're like, don't go. Tear. Oh, the tear works. What is it about physics? I stop in my tracks and I go, Professor Evans, you got one chance, bro. One chance to change my life. What is it about physics I need to know? Sell it, Johnny. Sell it. <laughs> that's the best Sell segue I've a, ever done, by the way. That, that's a great question <laughs> for Rob, who doesn't want to be there. Right. Yeah, because it will teach you the basics that you need in order to understand any kind of movement. Any and kind you, of movement. And you're the kind of guy that's always in motion, so. That's true. Did you see my yeah. Cleveland Utilities dance? I saw your dance. dance. I saw your dance. You know, so. I, I had a physics professor <laughs> in college. I have college. Time, he just saved me from a life of drugs and gang, <laughs> I know. And gang work. Impressive. I had a physics professor in college who said that the reason we needed to learn physics is because, because physics is the science of God. Really? I would agree with that. Do you believe that? Oh, yeah. I think it gives you a, a, a I don't know that we got enough time. Picture. I don't know that we've got enough time on this show he to was, get into that. He was a fascinating professor. I think it gives Physics, you an intimate picture of you uh, know creation. The, here's the most, this is the only thing I ever really learned about physics, okay? 
It is that in a roller coaster, which I do love, I may not love physics, but I love roller coasters. Um, in a roller coaster, you may not know this, Slinky, or maybe you do know. I might. The best place to ride, if you like to go really fast, is in the back. I did Because know that. according to physics, even though it feels like the whole thing's going the same speed, apparently you actually go faster in the back of a roller coaster. How is that possible? I don't, I don't think that it's faster. Uh, I don't know. It depends upon the roller coaster. I don't think it's faster. <laughs> it I think that it's, faster. it's longer. I think that the, the sustained speeds are longer. Hmm. You heard it here last. <laughs> Listen, there's more to I'm you. I'm the solar flare expert. I don't know. I, I do feel the need coasters. to say something only because only because this is important. Are you ready? <laughs> Here's what I am going to say before we talk about this art. We just had Dean Watson on the show, and we were talking about how the Cleveland Utilities guys are heroes. I need to say to you, many of you are aware, many people are aware that I am a part of, and you have been a part of, the Cleveland Bradley chain gang, that we've done a lot of chainsaw work. And I need all of you to know something this morning, that Johnny, I met Johnny Evans April 28th, the day after the 27th tornadoes. And I met him because a guy named William Lamb said, I know you guys are cutting a lot of trees, and there's a guy here working at my house who is, a best, who is the best guy at dropping a tree I've ever seen. He can, he can take a tree off a house like you've never seen. And over the, over the last year, I would be willing to say you and I have become very dear friends. Yes. We've been to Joplin, Missouri. We work tornadoes right. there. We have worked just about every tornado property in this town. And you never, you always refuse. When the news comes around, you run away. You don't want to have any part of it. You don't want to be quoted. You don't want anybody to take your picture. And so I tricked you into coming onto this show to talk about your art. Oh. So I could actually say to Cleveland that you are... Seriously, one of the greatest heroes in this community. I have seen you. You get Whitney Horn because you, you don't trick a hero. That's just dirty. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little dirty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just now that, that I've Whitney said Horn. that, bravo. Thank you, guys. What a lot of people have seen you and they don't realize because now you're in this blazer and you look sharp with your dress boots on. But they don't realize that typically... I didn't typically, recognize him without his overalls. When they, yeah, when they see you, you're normally in a pair of Liberty overalls yeah. hauling a husk of varnish saw around and cutting trees off houses. So I did want to say before we got into your art that I'm so proud to be your friend. I know that Ryan is proud to be your friend. You've worked his property. You know, you cut mm -hmm. the big stump out of the front of his yard with us uh, and so many others. But now I need to introduce your artistic side. Mm. So, Johnny Evans... Tell us what in the heck these things are. Uh, I like to tell people that it's my way of, I don't of know capturing creation's beauty. And I use, use uh, this, is, this piece is made out of steel, uh, cold rolled steel. And I use copper as well and some yeah. brass occasionally. Yeah. And it's just welded together um, or soldered together. And it's just my interpretation of what creation's beauty is. Where do you get the materials? Where do you get this stuff? How did this happen? What's the first time you did one of these? Uh, the first time I did one of these, a buddy of mine named Danny Green introduced me to it. He, was, he, he did similar work, and he said, you know, uh, why don't you try it? And I just made a tree with a welder, just trying it out, and have fell in love with it. It's, a, it's just a great stress relief for me, and, it, and I enjoyed making the pieces. Well, now these things, where do you find the materials for this? The materials, I, uh, like the copper, I, I get from different roofing places or... Uh, it's just copper there. flashing. Um, uh, the steel I buy from a machine shop here in town. And, right. Uh, uh, These things are fascinating. While we've been in here, every single person in here has stopped and looked at these and said they're gorgeous. I don't know how well it's translating on television. But these things are awesome. When you turn these, there's all sorts of different colors. There's like almost like rainbow colors right. in here. How do you get the different colors into the metal? The neat thing about copper is that it responds to heat. And so the, the rainbow color effect up here is just by applying a torch to it. So I just take a torch and just let the copper get to different temperatures and you get the different effect. If you get it too hot, it gets this kind of brown color. But if it, it's not quite as hot, you get this purple and yellow and green colors How that show up in it. How do you stipple this? How this is hammered this? with a uh, just a ball peen hammer, uh, and I use a piece of carpet underneath it just to get this effect. The only thing that gets this effect is a piece of uh, Berber carpet underneath it when I hammer it. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's really simple. Well, that, these things are awesome. Everybody's been stopping and they've been asking about these, and and like you said, this is your attempt to capture nature's beauty. 
What do you think it is? Now, you're a chemistry guy. You're probably not seen as terribly organic, I guess, in general. Yeah. You're kind of seen as like a kind of a geek. Yeah, I'm maybe. a geek. I'll take maybe that. Maybe a yeah, bit I'm of a geek. geek. I can say that, right? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't think you're a geek. You're one of the coolest guys I know. But, but um, this whole thing, I would not have guessed this sort of artistic side of you. What do your friends and family think of this? That's what everybody says. Because I'm so mechanical and everything else, and I'm so mathematical and everything else I do, that they don't say, they don't say that about me. They don't say, really? No, you don't. Well, you don't do any artwork. Like, yeah, I do. It, they just don't see that side of me, that artistic side, very often. How many of these things have you made? Uh, I have about 40 pieces out there. Would you, would you say that uh, the metal trees stand up to tornadoes better than the wooden ones? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I, I would guess. Is that what got, you, thankfully, thankfully, is that what got you into these trees? Is thankfully, the... <laughs> none of my pieces have uh, been in a home that was hit by a tornado. So. <laughs> well, if somebody wants one of these pieces, are they, able, are they for sale? Can folks buy oh, yeah, them? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, and, and during the season that the pavilion is open, I set up on Sundays in the pavilion. Where's uh, Which pavilion? The Tennessee Pavilion. The one in Chattanooga. So you do the Chattanooga Market. Right, the Chattanooga so, Market on Sunday so afternoon. People can come down to the Chattanooga Market. Correct. And they can purchase these. What if somebody is in town, they don't know where the Chattanooga Market is, or um, they just want to be able to get a hold of you to see the pieces or to you know purchase them here in town? Is there any way that they can get a hold of sure, you? Sure. The best way to get a hold of me is by email, uh, 20th Street Designs at gmail.com. Is that 20, is that two zero two zero T H Designs? Designs. Dot com uh, at, at gmail.com at gmail. so 20th, 20th street, street designs, designs at, at gmail.com correct you have 40 of these things what am i what would i pay for something like this uh these pieces this piece right here is, is uh about a hundred dollars just depends upon the size um, okay that's fantastic and, uh the piece over there this is those, the one everybody loves this, a lot of people like that kind of style and i have different versions of that Hold three that trees four beginning. trees uh different types of fences that i've done and those pieces range anywhere from about 125 to uh, to up to three to four hundred dollars. Just depends upon the the so detail a, work, a, how many branches are in the tree, the amount of time it takes. To so do to it. have a piece of custom art that's done by a local artist, that's really pretty reasonable. Oh yeah, that's it's really very pretty reasonable. fantastic, and it's metal work. How right. much time does it take you to do a piece like like let's say this one there? This one here, uh, this piece here was uh, probably total time on this was about two hours. So, okay. Um, and that was two hours nonstop without, without taking a break. Um, a piece like that over there probably takes me at least a day or, or two sometimes on, on those pieces. What if somebody wanted to, I mean, these are fascinating. Well, at two days, that's, I mean, let's say 20 hours at, at yeah. you know, and it's 200 bucks. I mean, you're, you're not making very yeah, much. Yeah, you're not making have much you off, about, obviously you, you love thought, it. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Have you thought about increasing what you charge? <laughs> I have, I've had, you know, I've had several people tell me that. But, well, so let we'll me see. ask you this, Johnny. Let me ask you this. Uh, what if somebody uh, wanted to commission a piece? What if somebody wants to... Are you open to that, or does it sure. have to be just the muse? Like, no. Let's say I came to you and I said, hey, I really want you to um, do a piece. You know, you and I have worked on the tornadoes, so I'd like a piece that's inspired by the sure. work we've done over the last year. Sure. Would you do something like that? Sure. I have done a couple pieces like that. And, you know, I, I do everything from this to furniture as well. I've done a, a table... Uh, for someone that had a grapevine in the middle of it, and the grapevine was copper leaves, and, and the vine itself was uh, copper. So, and 20th so, Street Designs at gmail.com. 20th. And now we've got four quick questions before we have to go away. All right, what do you think is the best movie ever made? Blazing Saddles. Ooh. What is your favorite movie? Shawshank Redemption. What is the funniest movie? Blazing Saddles. And what movie have you seen more than any other? <laughs> Lord of the Rings. Fantastic. All right. Johnny Evans from Lee University, thanks for being with us today. Thanks for everything you do for the community. Everybody, these things are awesome. Check them out. Get yourself one. If you're rich like Sir Dan Howell, get yourself five. And uh, 20th Street Designs at gmail.com. We're going to commercial. We'll be right back with the preview review here on Lights, Camera, Cleveland. Tennessee Valley this morning. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Kathy Guy with Landmark Insurance Brokerage. Call us today for all your personal insurance needs. With 28 years in the insurance business, I have the solutions and pricing you are looking for. At Landmark Insurance Brokerage, we've got you covered. 
Hello, I'm Dr. Gupta, and I'd like to introduce you to a valuable new healthcare solution here in Cleveland. Hyperbaric Services of East Tennessee is now open and accepting patients. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy is an incredible treatment clinically tested for a variety of physical and neurologic conditions, including autism, multiple sclerosis, fibromyalgia, migraine headaches, chronic fatigue syndrome, and even sports injuries and sprains. Hyperbaric Oxygen Therapy is a simple, safe, and painless process that raises a patient's oxygen level in the body. This increased oxygen level in our tissues and organs boosts the body's natural healing abilities and allows our bodies to function at a higher level. We will be happy to work in cooperation with your regular physician. However, referral is not required for this treatment. So whether you're dealing with a weekend injury, a chronic medical condition, or looking for anti-aging solutions, you owe it to yourself to explore what hyperbaric oxygen treatment can do for you or your loved ones. I invite you to contact us today for some more information. Hi, I'm Brittany Jackson. Join me every Wednesday night at 6.30 and midnight where we will highlight local sports, chat with coaches, and discover new tips every week. Only on In the Spotlight with Brittany Jackson. Hi, I'm Dr. Dennis Ford, board certified in anti-aging medicine and pain management. Have you had a recent decrease in energy, lack of sex drive, feel moody, grumpy, or sad? If so, you may have low testosterone and be a candidate for bioidentical hormone replacement. Listen to what two of my patients have to say. Before I came to the Ford Clinic, I had to have a nap every day. When I got off work, I'd lay around, really didn't want to do much, and felt real lazy. I've noticed since I had the testosterone implant that I could go a good eight hours doing the things I enjoy doing. I had it done, took about 25, 30 minutes, five months, and I'm doing good. My stomach, my muscles, they've completely changed. My fat level has dropped. I get to go out and run, exercise with my son. My muscles are just getting stronger. If you'd like to change your life, please call me at Ford Center for Pain Management and Anti-Aging Medicine at 423-400-9115. Very simple process and it's well worth it. <laughs> We're back, welcome back, and uh, we're gonna do the preview review. It's gotta be very fast, but this is where we review the big movie that's opening this week, and we do it based on uh, the previews and everything we've read and seen about it, but not based on having actually seen the movie, because we haven't. We are that good that we don't need to see the movie to tell you that you don't need to see the movie. That's right. Or and that you do need to see the movie. This week, the movie that we're telling you about is John Carter. This is, or should I say, Disney's John Carter. This is the big one, Slinky. This there are is... several movies, but this is the one. Right, they filmmaker uh, Andrew Stanton is making this film. It's based on the Edgar Rice Burroughs series of novels, John Carter of Mars. Um, this one stars Taylor Kish as John Carter, and it's got Willem Dafoe as uh, one of the bad guys, and Lynn Collins is playing uh, one of the chicks, because she's a girl. Well, here's the thing about John Carter. Number one is everybody seems to hate this thing so far. That's right. Nobody's terribly happy with it. Uh, you know, and that happens to Disney from now and again. It, this is not the, our, our father's Disney that right. you, ever, you always used to put out good things. Part of the problem is nobody knows how or why he goes to Mars. He's just at Mars and he's in adventures and, and nobody's really sure why. That's right. In fact, it actually uses the word in the description inexplicably. Yeah, inexplicably, which is sort of next to colluded. And hard to say. Yeah, indeed. Here's the deal, Slinky. What are you going to give this film? Uh, you know, I'm going to hate this one. I want desperately to love this movie, but you know, the trailers, it's kind of like the, the Clash of the Titans and Wrath of the Titans. The trailer is just a bunch of large special effects. And so it makes me go, great, are there characters? Do I care? That's my problem. Yeah, this reminds me of that film that came out last year that was just about a guy that was in a jungle. I don't remember any more about it. That's the problem. Remember? There was like, and they, they made a big deal about it because sometimes he's running away from a creature. This is that movie. This is the movie everyone's going to forget. I'm going to give it a hate. It's too bad. Well, that brings our show to a close. Thanks to both of our guests, uh, Dean and Johnny. We appreciate it. 20thstreetdesigns.com. Clevelandutilities.com. LightsCameraCleveland.com are you, are you done? Cleveland Utilities Cleveland Utilities Cleveland Utilities We'll see you next week Cleveland Utilities Cleveland Utilities Cleveland Utilities Cleveland Utilities Cleveland Utilities, Cleveland Utilities.